Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 1974 Italian giallo film Spasmo, and I've been looking forward to getting to this film because it's another Umberto Lenzi, and uh, I've been enjoying the Umberto Lenzi, even though he does have a tendency to go a little overboard with the zooming with the camera, uh, but I look past that because otherwise his style is really good. The stories are usually pretty compelling, like is the case with Spasmo, and uh, I just enjoy it. I just enjoy Giallo in general, and if you do as well, I have a whole playlist on my YouTube channel for Giallo reviews. I have like 50-some up at this point when I'm doing this. Also, I have an entire playlist for just Umberto Lenzi films, so you can watch that if you're an Umberto Lenzi fan. So anyway, 1974 Spasmo, directed by Umberto Lenzi, who also did such films as Seven Bloodstained Orchids, Orgasmo, A Quiet Place to Kill, Knife of Ice, Eyeball, So Sweet, So Perverse, Eaten Alive, Cannibal Faro, Ghost House, and Hitcher in the Dark, just to name a few. I've seen all the giallos on that list. The other ones I want to see at some point. Uh, this was written by Lenzi as well as Pino Bowler and Massimo Franci Franciosa. Uh, Massimo Franciosa also wrote scripts for such films as The Magistrate, The Assassin, She Got What She Asked For, one on top of the other, and Frankenstein Italian style. Yes, literally, the title is Frankenstein Italian style. Very interesting. So apparently with this film, Umberto Lenzi added to the script, well, after the script was done, he added the whole aspect of the dolls that are at play in this film, which I actually love that aspect of it. It's weird, it's kind of quirky, and it's introduced so early in the film that you're just sitting there for so long wondering, how are these dolls going to work into the story? And how they do work into the story, I think, is ultimately very interesting. Obviously, in the end, with Fritz, you find out that he also has this hereditary gene that makes you kind of a psychopath. And so he has been killing those dolls, killing those dolls, uh, to keep himself from killing actual people. So I thought that was a very good tie-in. So the fact that Lindsay added the dolls to it and... Well, that was great, but just to finish my statement, but I also thought, uh, I'm just going to call them dolls because that's what they're referred to in the film. They're more like mannequins to me personally, but we'll just call them dolls for the purpose of this review. So apparently Lucio Fulci was originally slated to direct this, but ended up not. So I kind of wonder what would this film have been like if Fulci had done it? Because his aesthetic and his style and the way he goes with kills totally different from Umberto Lenzi. I kind of have a feeling that, well, first of all, you probably wouldn't have got the doll aspect, which would suck because it's good in this film, but I think you may have gotten more gore to the film, which I think it really could have used, honestly, from someone like myself who really enjoys good gore, especially in giallo films. There really isn't good gore in this. Great story, uh, but not good gore. George A. Romero shot about 10 minutes for this film, because they were inserted when the American version was done. Uh, they were all killings because Lindsay chose to ha have it. He, he thought he was adding suspense by not actually showing the kills. So when the American version came out, apparently they had George A. Romero shoot about 10 minutes and they inserted it in there. So they were actual kills you were seeing for the film. So I watched the original version. I did not watch the Romero version. So I need to find the Romero version which would be really nice. Well, I, it's not really a Romero version. There's 10 minutes from Romero in it, but I'm just saying that so it's easier for you to know what I'm referring to, but just saying. Okay, very odd in this film in the very beginning for a random person to ask for their cigarette to be lit by a random person just sitting in a car. Now, you, I assume much later on that that random person sitting in the car was Christian, I guess, because they, they make a habit of showing him lighting cigarettes and having a lighter throughout the film, so that's just my guess. Um, then they end up finding the fake dead woman, which at first was pretty terrifying for them while they're making out, which is like, there's the other thing. Like, why are you going up to a person, asking them for a light, and then just going to make out over there uh, near where this person is just sitting in a car? It's, it's, it's weird. It, 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 it's weird. Uh, but, you know, that's Giallo for you. A lot of people in Giallo films do things for exactly no reason. And it feels like it's specifically so in this film because a lot of the characters just kind of feel like disjointed. They don't feel all that real. 
But obviously there ends up being a real reason for that because they're kind of trying to drive Christian nuts in order to get him committed to the nut house so that Fritz wouldn't have to worry about him because he had spent all his time trying to protect him from who he really was and his actual psychotic behaviors. Because obviously in the end we find out that Christian has been killing women and is totally unaware of it. And one of the best aspects of this film, in my opinion, is the fact that the perspective of the film is from Christian's perspective, the actual killer. I always love when they do that because you usually assume that whoever you're seeing the story through their eyes, they're not going to be a bad person. They're usually a good person. You're seeing it from their perspective, so they're usually going to be the good person. So whenever they make that twist and they're actually the killer, uh, granted, in a situation for Christian where he doesn't understand that he's the killer until the very end, it just has more, much more impact, and it's better at throwing people, getting those red herrings out there for people to follow instead. So I like that aspect of it. The story Christian tells of the strangled dog he found at the beach makes you believe that's a serial killer's stomping ground, which it's a really interesting beach area with the house in the background. It's a really nice place. I really love that shooting location. But the story that Christian tells about this dog being found strangled there uh, it really just plants that seed of there's a serial killer probably somewhere. Granted, at this point, you don't know it's actually Christian. And I'm going to bet that Christian was probably the one who had strangled the dog and then forgotten that he had strangled the dog because he did it during one of his psychotic rages that he obviously has no idea are going on after the fact. It's kind of one of those blackout things, it seems like, until at the end of the film, he's kind of getting these flashbacks it's like his brain has kind of uncovered the subconscious, and it's like, now you're being shown all the horrors of your actual actions, that which you are not aware of because of your hereditary condition. Yeah. Repeatedly seeing the life-size dolls all over is very weird, also creepy, uh, and it does make you wonder how it's going to end up being tied in in the end. Like I said, I love the way it ended up being tied in, especially with that impactful ending where Fritz is just, like, stabbing the one doll that he keeps in his like secret back room of all these dolls. I assume he probably just goes back there whenever he's got the urge. He's like, man, I've got, I feel the, the killing urge just creeping up on me. He goes back in this room and he'll just like stab or strangle or whatever these dolls. So, I mean, I guess that's a good way to take care of things, I guess. Especially if you don't want to end up being committed like he was trying to do to his brother. Even though the music is up loud, I would think that Barbara would end up hearing the scuffle in the bathroom and be concerned. Now, obviously, you find out... I mean, that was my thought when I was watching it initially, but then you end up finding out that basically Barbara was in on the whole thing, and that's why she turned the music up so loud, was so that it would basically be an excuse for her to not hear what was going on when, I guess his name was Tatum, uh, was busting in to act like he was going to kill Christian, and then, you know... Christian kills him, but with a gun with blanks, so they stage the whole thing to then make him think that he killed someone, and then he talks to people about it, and they're like, what are you talking about? I think you're losing it, and they're just trying to push, 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 push until he totally lost it, and they'd be like, this guy, get him into an insane asylum, that's where he needs to be, because that is where he needed to be, honestly, and, I, and Fritz obviously knew, knew that. I don't know if Fritz knew for sure that he was killing women at that point, but he probably had a suspicion, and that's why he was trying to get him in the mental ward uh, instead of him eventually being caught and being put into jail or him realizing what was going on at that point and then having to live with the issue of finding out that against your good nature, you've been killing people. I can't imagine what that would feel like. I like in these films when people are like, nah, let's not call the police. Because that's what Christian does immediately. Uh, when he thinks he killed someone, Barbara's like, we should call the police. He's like, nah, we don't really want to get them involved. And that happens in, like numerous times in Giallo films. Where it would just be like, oh man, this thing's going on. It's terrible. We should call the police. And they're like, eh, you know, maybe let's not. It seems like a lot of work to kind of use that rotary dial. I just, you know, let's just not do that. So I just think it's kind of a funny thing. Man, Barbara just disappears and reappears in this, and then she suggests breaking into her friend's place. She's a shady individual, and that's what I was thinking when she was in there initially. I definitely thought there was something up with her, which obviously there was, because she was in on this whole plan. 
to drive Christian nuts with Fritz and Tatum and Malcolm and Clorinda. I think that's all of who was involved in it. Um, wait, was Alex in on it? I think Alex was in on it too, actually. So yeah, but um, she seemed shady from the get-go, so I knew there was something else going on there. I just didn't know what this grand scheme would end up being until it was revealed. So that's good that I didn't see it coming. Christian decides not to call the police when he shoots a guy. Then he finds bloody lawn clippers and throws them in a well. What is with this guy? Now, my thought on that is those bloody lawn clippers at that point had been used for a murder. I believe, was that Clorinda's murder at that point? Um, so I, or, or maybe that was a plant, actually, something that was just planted there. So my thought is if it was actually supposed to be there as a part of their um, grand scheme to drive him nuts. Why did he just throw them into the well? But if they they were actually used during one of the murders, which would have been something Christian did, uh, did he throw them in the well because it was this kind of subconscious thing of you don't want to get caught, like this subconscious urge of like self-preservation? I don't know. But I, I think it was planted is my guess. Because you you also see characters using them at, at numerous times during the film. So I think it was one of those planted things. Because I also don't remember any of Christian's killings of the women being related to stabbing. I think they were all kind of like strangulation related. That was just his thing. It seemed like Fritz's thing was stabbing. Well, actually, Fritz's thing was a lot of thing based a lot of things based off what you see with the dolls throughout the film. Malcolm says he'd be happy to die in the place that they're in. Something tells me that's foreshadowing, which, yeah, it was. He actually, was, wasn't was he actually killed? I think he was actually dead in the film. Um, and Tatum had taken him out. I think it's because he got too close to Christian, is what was said, as, which doesn't make a, whole, make a whole lot of sense. But you don't see the kill, you know, at least in Umberto Lenzi's original version, you don't. You just find him, they just find him dead, and they're like, oh, there's some blood. You can really feel the confusion that Christian is feeling in the film. Things feel disjointed and very, very random. So for that reason, Lindsay did a wonderful job making it confusing because that's the intent. Like, it's supposed to be confusing to the audience and the interactions that Christian has with people are supposed to be so weird because, like I said before, it's from Christian's perspective. So the audience should then be confused. And I was confused until you find out what's going on in the end. So that's really good filmmaking, to be able to pull that off. I, I enjoy that. Malcolm seems way too calm. Everything is just fine in his estimation, no matter what's going on. Obviously, we find out in the end, he's basically acting. So for that reason, you know, in, in retrospect, it makes a lot of sense why he's way too calm about things. But when you're watching it for the first time, you're like, what is with this guy? Like, bad things are happening, and he's just like, hey, you know, whatever. Kind of like when Christian was like, nah, let's not call the police. Barbara is so dismissive and whiny when she interacts with Christian. Uh, makes it seem like somehow the 30 minutes that have passed at that point in this film has actually covered 30 years of their relationship. How how Barbara goes from like being all about Christian within the span of the first 30 minutes of this film, which from what I can tell is like less than a day's worth of time, or maybe a day's worth of time, it really feels like their relationship has gone so much further. Like I said, like 30 years. Because then all of a sudden she's she's like had it with him. She's had enough of him. She's she's totally exhausted with being with him. But maybe that was all part of the act anyway. So Christian sure is quick to bone Clorinda when he, she shows up at his room. Now, obviously that was in his head. He wasn't actually boning her. He was murdering her. And I don't think that she was actually interested in him at that point either. I think she just kind of showed up there and then the the switch happened in his brain and he lost all control. And So for him, I think when the psychotic aspect of his personality was kicking in, it's like he, the regular version of him, the not psychotic version of him, was like having a dream, which was that sexual experience when, you know, the psychotic aspect of him is in control and actually murdering at that point. What Malcolm says to Christian and how he says it makes it seem like he's Christian's therapist. That's another thing. So I think that's kind of why Malcolm was getting too close to him. He was trying to kind of help. And I think that's not what Fritz wanted in, in the end. Just saying. 
Whenever someone picks up the phone, it's always a vague conversation. That's another thing. Obviously, we find out that that's for the reason of they don't want Christian hearing what they're talking about because it's all about this grand plan that Fritz has that they're following. Um, but when you're watching it for the first time, you're just like, this is just increasing the mystery aspect of it. It's that something else is going on here, and I can't wait to find out what is it, what is happening. When you see the hand in the well, you wonder if it's a person or a doll, or at least I did at that point. In the end, you find out it was actually a person. That was one of the women. I think that was Clorinda's body um, after Christian had killed her, but obviously you find that out in the very end when he's having all those flashbacks. I like when Christian Christian runs over Tatum with the with the car at the, looks like a quarry basically. Um, pretty violent looking. It was a good scene. I enjoyed that. So everyone was there to try to drive Christian crazy. That makes sense because of how confusing everything was. Yeah, I kind of basically already covered that. Who was shooting these home movies Fritz was watching? That's a big, weird thing in this film. It's like they were basically a filmmaker, whoever was shooting those, because you see it from all these angles that you would definitely not have for, like, a homemade movie, unless that family was so rich, which it looked like they were rich, that they actually had a filmmaker who would do their own movies. So I guess you could explain it that way. We'll just go with that as the reasoning. But uh, I just found myself watching it when Fritz is sitting down watching these home movies just being like, it's done like a film. There's no way that these home movies are actually done this way. And who's shooting it? Because it shows everyone in the family, basically. It's weird. Barbara and Christian are just are just going to bone even though Alex is in the room or close close by. That was an odd choice. Uh, when Christian shows up and he and Barbara bone for the last time, uh, the fact that Barbara's like, Alex is nearby, and he's just like, I don't care, let's get it on. It's just another weird choice. I guess maybe because of his psychotic condition, he's very impulsive, so I guess you can explain it that way. Can't really explain it to her uh, for her, though, because she's not that way. And it turns out Christian killed every woman he ran into in the film. Love that twist. Very good. So, Fritz is killing the dolls. It's his way to satisfy his urges to kill so he doesn't end up like Christian and his father. Very solid twist on that. Uh, I love that aspect of when you're hearing that it's a hereditary thing. And then, even when that was happening, I wasn't thinking about Fritz being affected by it because he he seems so in control for the entire film. Like, you just don't really suspect that. And then he goes back into this room and he's just, like, stabbing that doll. And I'm like, oh. And there's just this great kind of aha moment to the film. So good twist to it. I, I enjoyed. Another film where the main character is the killer, which works well because the audience sees from the pers that perspective and naturally trusts that they are not the killer. Already basically talked about that. The characters speak so simp simply and act so oddly and detached from reality that it made me think this was all in Christian's head. I actually did think very early on because of how odd his interactions were with the people and how odd they were acting and how secretive everything was. I really thought that what was going to end up being revealed is that Christian was the killer in the end, but not that there was some sort of like plan to make him go crazy going on. I was going, I was thinking, and this actually would have been a really cool story too, I was thinking it would be a case where he's living alone at this location, and that's like, like actually his house, and the dolls are who he's interacting with, but in his mind he thinks it's actual people. So he's just going around like interacting with all these pe people, he thinks, but they're actually dolls, and then that's why they're all over the place like being found murdered because he's having these fake relationships with them, the relationships go bad, and then he disposes of them. So I thought in the end, sorry for my voice crack, I thought in the end it was going to end up being a situation where maybe no one dies at all. No one, like, actually dies. And it's just, like, the dolls the whole time and Christian satisfying those urges because he's in this, like, psychotic state that he can't get out of. But I thought that was a good idea. Lindsay and his zooms are in full effect. I already talked about that. Man, they do get annoying, but it's Lindsay. He does well otherwise. Some of the music really adds to the confusing nature of the film. There are these moments of, like, really discordant sounds that kind of pop in that just, like, 
auditorily let you know that something's off. Like, you know what you're watching feels off and looks off, but then when that discordant sound music-wise is added to it, it just enhances that feeling of things being weird and off, and I like that addition to the film. Uh, it's pretty disappointing, though, that people drink alcohol in this film and there's no J&B. There is always J&B in Giallo, and that is probably my biggest problem with this film. Where is the friggin' J&B? Every single Giallo film I have ever seen, when people are drinking, they're drinking J&B. Or even if they're not drinking J&B, the J&B is sitting right next to what they're drinking. You always see the J&B bottle. What happened, Lindsay? Where was the J&B in this one? I mean, obviously, it's not, like, a big problem, but, like, it threw me. It threw me for a big loop, because I'm like, they're drinking and it's not J&B. There's always J&B in Giallo. Anyone feel me on that? Go ahead and put a uh, comment down there. By the way, I had found a bunch of, um, there's a website called Redbubble that does a lot of different, like, independent t-shirt designs, and I was looking at Giallo shirts that people have created on there, and one of them literally is just a J&B label. <laughs> and I was like... That would be kind of fun to own for that reason. But anyway, that's my wrap-up of Spasmo. Glad to watch it. It was fun. So out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give it a very solid 3.5 star rating. Thought about going four, but I don't quite think it's to that point because it is kind of a bit on the slow end. I really think there should have been some actual good kills in there other than Tatum getting run over by the car. So 3.5, but know that I thought about the four, so it's kind of like in that in-between area. Would love to hear your opinions of Spasmo, though. Go ahead and put them in the comments. Love it, hate it, or in the middle. We'll talk about that. And just, you know, Giallo in general, we can do that. Do me a quick favor, very, very quick. Hit subscribe for me if you're not subscribed already. If you already are, thank you very much. I really do appreciate that. If you're not, please consider it because that's your way to repay me, to show me that you appreciate any of these videos I've ever done. Uh, it also really helps to motivate me to keep this stuff going. I've been doing it for some years, just trying to grow this nerdy horror community here. So help me in that. Um, but regardless, I really do thank you for taking your time to watch this. And until next time, keep it brutal.